On this episode of That Kingsville Podcast, it's 2022. It's the first episode of the year. Hey, we've got a lot of things that went on over the Christmas holidays. We're going to talk with John Norton, CAO of the Town of Kingsville, and Ryan McLeod, the Director of Financial and IT Services, about the first day of the council deliberations of the budget 2022 for the Town of Kingsville. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, mandate for s- school and food. Uh, we make some predictions and we also come out with a bombshell about the guys and what it is that we will not be doing this year. So join us on That Kingsville Podcast coming up. We'd like to thank our sponsors of That Kingsville Podcast, Kingsville Brewery. They want to thank everyone for their amazing community support uh, throughout the last couple of years. The Tap House is open still for takeout, beer to go, and merch sales from Wednesday to Sunday. They can't wait to have everyone back in the Tap House again soon, but until then, the addition, uh, in addition to their bar menu items, they'll be offering daily specials during their new hours. To order, call the Tap House directly at 519-712-8884 or visit, on their, visit them on their web, website, www.kingsvillebrewery.com. Cheers to the everyday adventure. Thank you, Kingsville Brewery, for sponsoring that Kingsville podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2022 and the first episode of That Kingsville Podcast. I'm your host, Dave. With me in studio, Steve Ianson on the phone because he got the vid, Kevin Black. Got the vid. Yeah. Little vidy. Little vidy over here. Yeah, is this the first time around for you? Yeah, first time. Yeah, first not, time, long time. Yeah, not not collecting all the uh, ver- uh, the variants. You know, you just, just going with the one <laughs> yeah. and done. <laughs> like trading cards, <laughs> Gary. You were saying you you said you said you got uh, in uh, you know early on in COVID land timeline, and yeah, now... I had the right at the start, right <sighs> last uh, March of 2019. Yeah, yeah, Ugh. it was ugly. It was really 2020. Ugly. 2020. March of 2020. 2020. Yeah, I, time doesn't matter oh, anymore. I can't keep track. No, no, no. It's just yeah. Steve, you had excitement over the holiday too. Sure, if you want to call it that. Oh, I'll, you're, you're a lighter man. There's less of you there in this world. Me. Yes, <laughs> Steve, yes. you had your appendix taken out. I did. I yeah. did. And you know what? It was uh, wasn't good. I guess uh, it was. It could have been a, a bad situation by the time I got there. But you know what? Kudos to all the staff at uh, Erie Shores Hospital. Health Bravo. Care. Sorry. Make what? sure I get the title right. I don't yeah. want Kevin yeah. screaming at me. No. But uh, no, I mean, hey, I I had great care. I was uh, operated on on the seventeenth, home on the eighteenth. Christmas on the couch. There we go. Yeah, but see, you because of the condition, you didn't gain any lbs. All I did over the holiday <laughs> was just pack on an additional ten to fifteen pounds. Like nothing going on, nothing happening. No, that's that's really all I get to do. Stuff. So it's tough. Yeah. Maybe well, I, I, I not that you need I to leave, even leave my house. <laughs> yes, that's right. No, Kevin. Do we have to drone airlift you food so you can get fat? Yeah. Yeah. No. So lots starting to happen in 2022. Yeah, you know, we kicking off this year. Well, Dave had a birthday. Yeah, hooray. Hey, we'll call it that. COVID birthday. It doesn't really exist. I've actually I'm trading in my birthday. It's no longer January 6th. It's gonna be July 6th. Because kids would have summer birthdays, though we had summer birthday parties in the last few years. I haven't had a birthday party, so we can just celebrate it then. I think there'll be a few joining you. Mine's July 11th, so, you know, we can celebrate together. Oh, there we are. (laughs) Block party. (laughs) Yay. So... So yeah, uh, we're going to kick off this this season of that Kingsville podcast because there's a lot going on municipally with the, the budget. So we, we'll, we'll get you into that. Me a budget. You guys, you guys, uh, journalists, you dig this budget more than I know. So I rely on you guys for the expertise to specificity. But I know, Kev, you're just itching there sitting in your basement, just boiling over this uh, proposed budget uh because today was the first meeting that they had for for deliberations. So uh, a little later on in the show, we'll have uh, CAO John Norton on with us to discuss some of the dealings today and where we're at with the deliberations. But before we get there, we had a little bit of council news. Council news. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. 
So, Steve, there's more things that are getting paved in the town of Kingsville by water. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the access road on, on Cedar Island that uh, does the little turnaround loop-de-loop by the marina, that will be repaved, was greenlit at council. And that one, that one makes sense. Yeah. I mean, let's be realistic. Yeah. It's high traffic, and if, you know, heaven forbid there's an emergency out on the lake, you want the mm. emergency personnel to have the safest, quickest access as possible. Yeah. So, you know, that yeah. makes sense to me. I mean, not like the almost doing a header down Lakeside Park yes. because of the paved yeah. path covered no. in snow. Yeah. But anyway. Like, Kevin, you you went and saw the Fantasy of Lights as well, like the, the two of us did over the holidays, correct? Yeah. And Absolutely. did you did you take the path, the paved path down to the lower bowl? No, no. See, no, I did. I, I did. It looked way too treacherous. I did, <laughs> I, and apparently, I was taking my life in my own hands because it was a, a snowy <laughs> night. Right, the one night that we got snow. Right, me and the kids and the wife were like, you know what? It's picturesque. We'll go look at the lights when it's pretty. You guys were down there. We were. They, there was a romance to that, right? Kevin and their fam were down there. Exactly. That's right. what you want to see. So we're, you know, doing and, the, and, and I wouldn't expect it to be plowed or salted or anything. Like I, my expectations, I think are realistic enough that no one's going to be down there to do that, but please no, go on. Yeah. But I, I underestimated the grade and the slickness on that hill. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I may be overweight and not athletic at all, but holy cow, that, uh, if if it's in some slippery conditions, that pathway to the lower bowl from the the south end of the park or the north or the top of the park to the bottom of the park, yep. wow! That to the to the bridge, woo! Right, and my son, knowing knowing no knowing knowing, knowing, <laughs> knowing it was treacherous, decided, oh, I'll take the grass, and yep. he, you know, bottoms up, <laughs> you know, so he finishes his walk covered in mud. He didn't complain or anything like that, but it was just okay. So kind of. I'll take the less treacherous route. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but but if it's paved, shouldn't we? I, I know you said you didn't expect it to be salted or plowed, but if it's paved, shouldn't you? Because it's it's a paved path now. Right. But timelines realistically would suggest you're not going to be out there plowing and salting as the snow's coming down. I guess you could do um, maybe a pre salt if you wanted to be yeah, proactive, they, but mm -hmm. they should. Should, especially in an area where they know like they're encouraging traffic to be like they're they have you know active uh posts and, and and campaigns to try and get people to come out to fantasy of light they should anticipate that there's going to be traffic treacherous insane lessons learned they should heat it they should yeah they should heat it <laughs> all right <laughs> the stand, and the standing water we'll talk about that another yeah. time let's get john on the line busy day for you today it was a busy day. I've got Ryan McLeod on the phone, too. Oh, that's why oh, I Oh, this can't. just got, got better. We got double calls. Hello, Sweet. gentlemen. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us on that Kingsville podcast. How reluctantly did he join us? Though? I don't know. Ryan, was it, was it a real <laughs> twist of the arm? I saw you guys on camera briefly today. I couldn't let John go on alone, so I figured I'd come for backup. Oh, well, no. <laughs> thanks for taking a few minutes with us tonight. Um, I guess we'll get right into it. Guys, today was day one of deliberations. We had the uh, the proposed budget distributed uh, earlier in the week, so um, you know a lot of things to cover. Uh, can you can you provide a quick summary for those that didn't spend from nine to five oh seven today, watching the full extent of what you guys talked about? Because uh, a lot of little things uh, happen. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll just jump in. So we we started off with. Um a report from each department um, kind of talking about the new positions being proposed. Um, so we went through those staff reports. They talked about the rationale and, and justification for each position. We talked about how it would hit the budget. Um, and then uh, that took most of the morning. And then uh, in the afternoon, we kind of got into the various departmental budgets. Uh, we went from council, general admin, IT, animal control, fire, police, building, and public works. And uh, council approved the... Uh, departmental and capital budgets associated with each of those departments uh, with some modifications as we went along. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, um, I guess, let's call it prevalent things that were discussed in various social media posts is um, there were 10 positions, if I remember correctly, up for addition for the municipality today. Uh, how many of those positions were discussed and reviewed 
and which ones were approved initially? Sure. So, yes, there were 10 positions. Um, all of them were discussed. Um, they were discussed in the context of uh, getting counsel to just hear the positions so they had a chance to hear them all before making any final decisions. And then we asked counsel just to um, include them in the budget or not. So all the positions were included in the budget. Um, and then we, uh, as we went through each department, if a position was included in that department, um, counsel made the final decision on whether or not to, to proceed. Uh, so they heard, um, they, when I looked through the, the departments that they went through, um, all the positions were considered today with the exception of the programs and events assistant. Um, and so council, uh, they did approve the majority of the positions. Uh, there was one position, uh, HR assistant, uh, where they approved it on a part-time basis instead of a full-time basis, what uh, the administration was proposing. Uh, we were also proposing two public works um, employees and council approved one of those positions. Yeah, John, when, when you were in studio here with us at the end of last year, you were talking about some of the... Uh, the um, management and the uh, staffing concerns from the municipality. Uh, are these the positions that uh, were of approval with this budget? Are these the uh, immediate needs through uh, an assessment that was done or conducted for the municipality? Correct. Yeah. So we explained to council today that, you know, we started this process really last summer and we received input from uh, a lot of staff. We also used the organizational review that was completed by an external consultant in uh, 2020, the end of 2020. And uh, we used that as our basis. We used staff input last summer. And then uh, the senior management team went away and, and focused on uh, narrowing down the list of positions. We did our own sort of work to, to you know, really ask ourselves, what is needed versus, you know, a nice to do, what would be nice to have or, um, or even a, you know, a should do, but what are the must do's? And we, we tried to get it down as far as possible. We know that uh, protecting uh, the taxes are important. We, we obviously are very sensitive to tax increases as well and take our uh, responsibility for financial uh, accountability and, and prudence very, very seriously. So we, we brought forward only the positions that we felt were necessary. And I think, um, I think council understands that for years, the town of Kingsville has um, been very light in the, the staffing levels uh, that, that, that we've had in the town. And, you know, in cor correspondingly, we've been unable to provide services that our neighboring towns have been able to provide. So, you know, now I think this puts us in a, in a great position and uh, we, we're, we're, you know, going to be able to move forward and provide uh, more services to the town. So through the proposal, the initial taxation increase was at 2.64%, if I remember correctly, Ryan? Well, the, the original budget that we proposed to council had a $62.39 uh, tax increase on a home value or home assessed at $250,000. And I know there's um, been a lot of controversy over that, you know, <laughs> no. that value, the value of a home at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And what I just want to remind the public is that, you know, this isn't what the market value of a home is. It's not right. what you pay your property taxes on. You pay your property taxes based on the assessed value, um, right. which is currently based on assessed values as of January first, twenty sixteen. So it's quite a few years out of date. And I think most people would agree that when they look at their property tax bills or assessment notices issued by impact, mm -hmm. the assessed values is significantly below current market values on homes. So um, it's just important to uh, really emphasize the distinction, the difference between the assessed values that property taxes are based on versus market values. And, and I really wish we could get the entire town to listen to this podcast just for this episode so they could understand <laughs> that because no, they, it's, it's a great point. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and I'm glad it's mentioned. Um, Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there because I know Ryan, you've done you know several municipal budgets now, and and maybe you don't want to answer this question either of you. But do you did you approach this budget a little bit differently, knowing it was an election year and knowing the numbers, if they came in kind of high, 
weren't going to sit well, that you knew that there was going to be probably a lot of chopping, or do you simply approach it from a management position and say, hey, this is what we need, this is what we have to do, we're going to present it as is? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say we were ignorant to the fact that it was an election year, but I wouldn't say that it really affected um, our decision or recommendations too much. Uh, this is actually one of the, the larger increases that we've proposed in recent years. I've never heard in all the years I've done this that this is the year to do the tax increase. <laughs> so um, It doesn't come around. I, no? I, I kind of, <laughs> so I've heard every year that this is not the year to do it. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that that's... That speaks to the fact that, as, as John alluded to earlier, that, you know, we're understaffed in several areas because, you know, every year we've been very sensitive to the, you know, the, the politics in terms of, you know, what tax increases mean. Um, and we've held back on making those recommendations to council that we probably should have made two or three years ago um, because we've been so sensitive about the tax rate. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, we're kind of at a breaking point now where management um, – and not just management, all staff are working, you know, excessive amounts of overtime just to meet the service levels where, you know, if we want to keep staff, we kind of have to introduce, we have to kind of add to our staff and complement to spread the workload. It's not really something we can defer much longer. So obviously the, the municipal, sorry, municipality continues to grow. I mean, you, you have the projections, you have the roads need studies, you have your uh, vehicle need studies. How long are we looking at to really catch up to where the town needs to be when it comes to staffing levels? Well, I mean, I, I feel like based on what uh, council's approved so far, it certainly puts us in a lot better position. Right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, every time you add a new piece or compliment onto the, onto the team, you know, certain responsibilities get shifted around. Um, you know, we're constantly looking at, you know, what can we do better? What can we, you know, what technology do we need to invest in to try and become more efficient? Um, which policies do we need to change? Sometimes their policies drive inefficiencies and we need to really just change the policy. So, um, you know, I, I think that this puts us in a good position. I'm not going to say we're not going to ask for any new staff next year, um, but I feel like this this makes a significant step forward in, in kind of right-sizing our staff and complement. Yeah, it, and and making sure that whatever the the necessary accommodations are met to serve what you've determined our immediate needs. So, there's a few other things in the budget, though. Um, just what would like to discuss. Um, for instance, the council honorarium increase uh, of forty seven thousand five hundred and twenty six from the twenty twenty one budget, uh, being a twenty one point six percent increase. Uh, well, what's the the background on that increase? What was the justification? No, I uh, I applaud you guys for uh, <laughs> your homework and I've been looking at the budget. Uh, uh-huh. The reason that has inc- the reason that has increased uh, so much is because in 2021 we did a committee review, and as part of that committee review, um, we determined uh, it made more sense to pay council kind of a base salary that included all of their committee work versus paying the base salary plus attendance at individual committees. So they really haven't received uh, anything more than a cost of living increase of, of 2% um, to their overall compensation. But instead of their compensation being kind of split out between the various departments on the committees they served, it's now kind of wrapped all together on the council budget. So that's why you're seeing a big increase on that line. So we were but trying overall, to the we were trying to nail you in an election year, like how oh, they're giving themselves a raise. What's going on? Oh. I know they eliminate all these volunteer positions just so they can pocket yeah, the exactly. money themselves. All Come the on. all yeah. the fat stacks of cash <laughs> they can roll around in. Now, fine, Ryan, you make sense. Okay, fine. Uh, next one, Pavilion, uh, sixty-four thousand six hundred in expenses, ten thousand in rent. Revenue. Grovedale budgeted seventy thousand in expenses, but thirty thousand in revenue. Why? Well, since we've opened up on the Grovedale, we've never had a really full year of a service. Basically, uh, COVID hit uh, just a few months after that building was opened up and operational. So we haven't really ever had a chance to see that building at full swing. Uh, I will say, though, that we struggle with it uh, internally as a management team in terms of, you know, the building was was built to be a community asset, right? And mm-hmm. we want to support programs. We want to support arts. We want us to use it as a tourism attraction to draw people to the area. Um, so, you know, if 
if it's being used for community programming and that type of thing, it's not going to, you know, we can't have it rented out constantly. Um, if we made the decision to use it as just a strictly a wedding venue, we could have that uh, building rented every weekend and it would be closer to, uh, you know, possibly even a, a revenue generator for the town. But um, we don't want to take all that uh, that community asset and use it just for private rentals. We want to make it available for for public programming and public use, um, which is never really going to generate the income that those private rentals would. But we're we're not forecasting any kind of revenue for either of the buildings at all this year with with numbers of ten thousand and thirty thousand. That's you know we're we're at a, a major deficit in just operating budget. So you know is is it it. it <laughs> That in particular for for 2022 is just based on the reality of yeah. and what uh, you know we have people that are reluctant to book events just because they don't know if they can you know what the capacity limits are going to be like. So we are seeing a huge decline in in rental revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say we did receive a significant amount of money from the province to help address some of these COVID challenges, and so that it wouldn't impact our budget, or at least not significantly. And I think, you know, not to pat ourselves on the back, of the heart, but I think Manny's done a good job of preserving that COVID money yes. um, yep. that we did receive. And we've made some tough decisions. We've laid people off. Yep. Uh, you know, we've shuttered certain facilities. And so we've tried to stretch out those dollars so that we can supplement the budget to make up for that lost revenue that we would have otherwise had if COVID didn't exist. So on that point, uh, some capital projects from last year, it was shown in the budget as coming in uh, millions of dollars under budget. Is, is that just a, a formality or, or do we have that in surplus revenue or what happened with that budgeted allotment or is it just a, an accounting thing? Yeah, I would, I would just, the short answer is it's kind of an accounting thing. Thanks. Um, the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, any projects that aren't completed at year end, um, that money is just being set aside for their completion in okay. 2022. So it can't be shown as an actual expense. So talking capital projects, which is, that was always the most exciting thing when I covered budgets was capital projects. Last few years, obviously, there've been some some major disruptions, if you will, or, or reconstruction of major arteries, Road 2, Main Street, even even Jasperson. What's, uh, what's on tap for 2022 that... Um, you know, significant dollar wise, significant, uh, I don't want to say disruption wise, but, you know, major arteries. No, it's for sure. There are some very significant capital projects. Uh, the biggest one probably being the extension of the road to east construction. So in 2022, we're going to go from the Graham to Kratz. Um, so that involves both the road reconstruction and uh, the water main that goes with it. Um that's probably be, uh, probably our single biggest project. Um, council today also approved the resurfacing of Road 3 East uh, from County Road 34 to uh, the Abuna Town Line. They approved a resurfacing of a section of Road 11 and Road 10. I'm sure the uh, residents in, in that area will be very excited to see those projects being pushed forward. They were kind of long overdue for uh, resurfacing. Uh, there's also some resurfacing work uh, being done on Cedar Island, improving the state of those subdivision roads. Uh, those are probably the biggest uh, infrastructure projects that the public will see this year. Okay. Did uh, did Stonehenge Coghill, is that approved, the water main and reconstruction in that neighborhood? We didn't, uh, we didn't, council didn't hear the water and wastewater budget okay. today, so it okay. was not approved. Today. Yeah, we only got up to what, sanitation, okay. I think and, it was. And what was the, it was division road north. Would, Re- yeah. We could add as well, uh, the Cedar Island laneway. Uh, where the boats dock there in Cedar Island Park. Yep, yep. You know, for the marina, that's that's uh, that was approved today, as well as the Sumac Pedestrian Bridge in sort of in the center area of Kingsville. There, just north. <laughs> Funny you should that's mention an that, John. One. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you're welcome. I, okay, one more I'd like to mention though. First, okay. this is another important sure. one. I don't know whether you mentioned this one, Ryan, but the engineering work for the West Side Collector Road that will go north from, uh, you know, right there where the beer store is. Yep. Um, straight north up to our road two. Okay. So that's, uh, I think, an exciting new road that will help, hopefully, with traffic issues, right? Yeah. And uh, in, in this year, 2022, just the engineering work to help design it. And then I uh, expect it will come forward 
for construction in hopefully 2023. Yeah, something that we've uh, long awaited the the full disposition. So it's it's good to hear that that's been uh, been greenlit uh, at least for the the initial onset of the project. But um, the Sumac pedestrian bridge. So. Steve and I lived in Kingsville for a very long time. Ryan, you're not from the town directly, but you you were in the Caught community. Him. Caught him's, yeah, but he this wouldn't know about the Sumac Pedestrian Bridge. Probably not. Right? Gary remembers it also from his childhood. Uh, so that pedestrian bridge, we were under the assumption the initial bridge was a, a resident-built uh, access throughway on town easement property. Um, was there a time when the town actually funded the bridge construction uh, a few years ago when there was a, a replacement done, maybe five or six years ago, if I remember correctly? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know the full history on that bridge. I've heard uh, varying stories involving like some volunteer groups assembling it. Right. Um, and some town involvement, but it is on town property. Correct. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just we're trying to piece together the 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 necessity of uh, what it is that's being done with the budget line item of one hundred and ninety thousand for accessibility, <laughs> knowing the embankments on either side aren't exactly they're steep. Yeah, they're not accessible in their own right, just in the the conditions that exist naturally. So. Um, kind of a question as to understand that yes it's an, an issue for accessibility but is this an inaccessible bridge that we are now gaining accessibility for or is it going to be a suspension bridge like the new gordy howe <laughs> <laughs> well uh, the uh we are basically just replacing the deck of the existing bridge so it won't be any more accessible um than it is currently it's more just to replace the uh the failing deck structure that on the existing bridge. So yeah, at, at one hundred and ninety thousand dollars for some lumber, I know twenty twenty <laughs> prices for for timber was expensive and extreme. Did the town buy a whole bunch, and they're just trying to get rid of some reserves? Right? Well, no. That that question was actually asked <laughs> by a councillor today, and I think the answer was that the the steel structure beneath the wood frame is yeah. actually needing replaced. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and, and to do it. Yeah, so they're going to fully replace what's there, including including the the supports underneath. So yeah, it's expensive. And I think I think our concern was that if the initiative was to gain accessibility, or this project was going to, going to be done in light of accessibility addition for that bridge, that the fact of where it's located doesn't lend itself to accessibility naturally. And I think if I right. remember correctly, no, there was I there was one councillor that was reluctant to support it. I think it was Thomas. I think he reluctantly. I, well, I think, I, I, yeah, I think if there was, you know, and, and to be honest, if we were to make it fully accessible, right, it would, the cost would be much higher. Right. Yes. Be a, a bridge that would, you know, because think of the span going from one end of that ravine to the other at street level. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be, it would be a huge bridge. And then you really might as well build it as a road, you know, a road <laughs> and that's, that's, through there, right? that's exactly the discussion we were having. Actually, we were being a little bit facetious at times, but yeah. by the same token, if, as we read it, that we would have to go from yeah. street level on Mill Creek Crescent to street Sumac. level on Sumac. Yeah. And that would be a significant <laughs> upgrade, literally and figuratively. <laughs> oh, hey, no, no, no. All right. Lastly, for you guys. So the 2.9% re reserve contribution is being cut uh, because of budget pressures. Uh, most of those budget pressures being wages. Uh, how, how can we make that up if uh, that issue is an ongoing cost? How do we recover? So I, I think when you say 2.9%, you're referring to what we had uh, kind of committed to in the strategic plan several years ago yeah. um, in terms of contributing to uh, the um, infrastructure and life cycle replacement costs of our various assets. Yep. Uh, really, um, you know, in 2022, we're revamping our asset management plan. Um, we're going to look at our replacement costs, look at our estimated useful lives, look at the condition of our current assets. Hopefully, we'll be able to put together a financial plan that works. Um, we know we have an infrastructure deficit. We know we're not going to fix it in one year or two years. Um, so it's going to be a long-term strategy of continuing to invest in infrastructure. Um, you know, we want to be a community that kind of, that, you know, can stand on its own. It isn't relying on debt to, to replace roads or replace bridges as they come, uh, as they need to be replaced. We want to be able to have that money there to replace those things without uh, passing that burden on to future generations. So just for our listeners, when is the next deliberation? 
the next deliberation is uh, next Wednesday, so the 19th. Okay, and since you've been so gracious to join us this evening, I'm wondering if we could book you both once the uh, budget's approved so we can just talk final numbers yeah. and, and, and a breakdown, please. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, yes. that. Gentlemen, we can not, that's, that and, that's on record yeah. too now. We've got yeah, we understand you guys have had a very long day. We don't want to take up any more of your time, but I want to thank Ryan McLeod, the Director of Financial and IT Services at Town of Kingsville, and CAO John Norton for joining us on the first episode of uh, Season 20, 200, or 2 of That Kingsville Podcast. G again, gentlemen, much appreciated. Thank you for your time tonight. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Thank you. Take care. So, Kevin, before the holidays, uh, the federal government mandate from the Prime Minister's office uh, – sent out some letters uh, to the Minister of Agriculture and Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, urging them to develop a national school food policy. And as we discussed on the podcast about the new K-12 school in Kingsville and some of the issues around the design, there's no cafeteria or kitchen in the scope of design for the new school. So... Are we, uh, we, we treading down a pretty slippery slope of why did we do that? Well, it's kind of interesting, right? Like, just so people understand, the mandate letter is basically the prime minister's way of setting the agenda for the fall, for the upcoming year. So, um, there's a number of different things kind of laid out in those letters. And, and they're obviously different in each letter because one's the minister of agriculture and one's the minister of families and children, social development. So, um, they're filled with totally different priorities, but it's interesting that the one priority that crossed into both of those mandate letters was this idea for a national school food policy. And, um, and it's been something that has been um, lobbied for for a long time. Um, there's some groups locally that have been lobbying for something like this for, mm -hmm. for ages. Yep. Um, they were, they've been hoping to do it at a provincial level because as we know, uh, schools are really a provincial purview. Um, the feds will give funding to the provinces to facilitate, but, uh, for the most part, they're a provincial animal. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, the, and then this policy direction comes in from the federal government at the same time that we're looking to break ground on a school with, without a cafeteria. I, I think it even goes beyond that, like all of the existing establishments or schools, I should say, and facilities that don't already have any kitchen facilities. Because I know Kingsville Public doesn't have a cafeteria. And if it was remaining in its current state, there's a retrofit cost or some accommodation cost. For that. And I know where we used to get the hot dogs and the milk, Steve. That doesn't count. That's not a kitchen. It's a fridge in a closet. But well, they, they don't even have they don't even have that in the new school. That was actually a point of debate yeah. for for like 20 minutes during that uh, board meeting where they were deciding whether or not they were going to include. I, for, I forget what they're called. Uh, they have, that there's a special name for them but and those little like mini kitchens but yeah they even voted that out of the Kingsville school yeah and and, <laughs> and I think it further fuels the the oh, the issue when it comes to when projects are designed and greenlit and approved and there's no opportunity for accommodation when changes happen and what the repercussions are on a far greater scale especially when there's a fed mandate or a, a potential that could have such a drastic change to the entire layout of the school when, you know, if, if nothing is done, then it, it forces the hand of parents and, and of students to either bring food from home, which can happen. Sometimes it's difficult because we know that there are families that don't have accessibility to do things like that, right? There are several different uh, organizations in town right now that offer breakfast programs in order to help uh, where those are necessary, but above and beyond that, you know, some of the children that get bust in from Harrow, right? You, they, you know, there's accommodations that would have to be met, or there's an additional cost if they have to seek food locally. And with the location of the new school being on Jasperson, the closest food establishments are all fast food. You know, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Tim Hortons. Dairy Queen, right? Now let's think that way too. You've got right and, the and, apple, the applewood hot dog cart. Yes, yes, applewood. Hot, <laughs> no, the, the black applewood hot dog. You, you raise a good point though with the um, 
with the breakfast program because I mean there are families who who obviously rely on that and and I've seen the benefits of that program and I've heard about the benefits of that program and it's it's not just it's not just the breakfast right I know I remember seeing like like staff members more so the the administration from KPS yep. going over there and interacting with kids and getting to know kids and yep. And, and and see them on a different level, so to speak. The kids seeing the admin on a different level. Um, my only, I guess, suggestion or, or thought to continue that would be to have something at the arena. I mean, that would be the closest amenity. Yeah. Um, and then, ha I mean, you joke around about a hot dog cart, but who's to say that people aren't going to get food trucks or some way of delivering and, and set up at the arena yeah. and, and provide yeah. a means? Because yeah. there, are, there are several groups and... and restaurants within the community who have different ways and means of getting their product out, getting yeah. their service out. And yeah, green, green heart in town, they pride themselves in being able to offer options like that. Right. But and then it, they have a great school um, program too. Right. Yeah. But it, 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 with the school's location now being out of walking distance for, right. for the high school and older elementary school, like now the, the opportunity in order to, to, to get that available becomes a little bit harder right and that's why i'm saying maybe yeah. maybe the arena becomes like that <clears throat> that conduit if you will to or, or you know because really during the school day there's not a lot going on at the arena um but then do we now tread in in those waters of bylaws for food trucks hey there's, oh, there's, there's, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that's food for thought but um, <laughs> first one of the season thank there you we go. had to draw one at some point thank you but no, I'm just, I'm using the arena as an example because yeah, there yeah. really is nothing else unless Correct. you and I set something up on our front yard, front lawns. Um, no. Yeah. Not happening. Not, anyway. No. Um, yeah, no. Might, I, I might. <laughs> yeah, Kev, you're, yeah, you're well, like on the road. People have got a great view because the tree's trimmed, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Won't let that go. Huh? It, 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 Never. It, it does, it honestly does create a whole it, another set of issues if this is an actual mandate how does how does the municipality or the school board accommodate and do it within the the best sense of what the needs of the community are because hey is it the baptist church that handles the the breakfast program at, at kps, KPS yes. right. so the baptist church because of their facilities being next door to the to the school had the the breakfast program in their facilities right that doesn't exist anymore. Right. So well, the church does, but yeah, well, yeah but the, 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 uh, yeah, the, the I know in proximity, I yeah, get yeah. it. I'm just being a, so like we going to bus kids over to the Baptist church. No, the Baptist church, if they want to continue having the breakfast program has to figure out how to accommodate come to the school. But yeah. The Lutheran church has yeah. done something similar yeah. with Kingswell district high school. Yeah. They have brought in meals yep. for, for staff and, and certain groups. And you know, I mean, it's going to change. Interesting. Kevin, interesting. Go before going down, and I know this is a bit of a rabbit hole, but but it, are is it confirmed now that the high school, well, the new school is going to open with portables? Oh, I don't have know. We, have we gotten anywhere with that yet? No, we need because to. we're now, and this is one hundred percent rumor. I like that. But reckless speculation. The, reckless speculation <laughs> was that that there were plans circulating that included a marked off area for portable. Oh, I can't wait. I wouldn't doubt it. Though. I can't I mean, wait. They've dropped the ball on most of the new builds already. <sighs> so, uh, do, we, do we have to do another episode on the school? Yes. There's a lot. Nothing A lot of nothing happening in February where we can just ramble on ad nauseum on school issues. I think we have to because I think if, we have to. If, if that school opens with portables, it's it's really an embarrassment for all elected oh. officials at all levels, right? Like oh. like from from the MPP yeah. down, and, and a council can can try to brush it off that it was a uh, a, a board thing, and but they could they could have been more active and and part of those conversations, and and they chose not to be. And then the board will say, "Well, it's a, a, a provincial thing," but they they really haven't tried to do any any work to push it. And, and then the MPP will just say, "Well, I'm not in government, <laughs> so <laughs> well, he's not he's not even in parliament." Soon, yeah, but yeah. Um, no, but I, I mean, the school board. There was a motion on the floor to request additional funding from the province. Mm -hmm. 
and it was voted down. I, I could be wrong, but well, by one, mm-hmm. four, three, or five, four. I right. can't remember exactly the votes, but you know, the opportunity was there to try and seek additional funding, and <sighs> and we did we did talk about it on on, we did, on yes, the show. That, I don't remember what episode it was, but. Yeah, I one, think somewhere between one and nineteen, somewhere in there. I know it wasn't nineteen, but and I, I know it wasn't it's one. one of those. I agree, and and we did that episode, but it's one of those things that I feel like like we can just we have to do it again. Yeah, we have to <laughs> because we have to because it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. They're going to spend millions of dollars, and they could spend a few million more and build it right. But instead, they didn't want to ask for the extra cash, and so they're going to have portables. Yeah, well, well, open. Uh, Possibly. Uh, Rumors are that it could. Common sense is not exactly common. Anyhow, on to bigger and better things. 2022 is a whole new year. Let's make some predictions like we did last year. Sweet. So we can see how smart we are in December. We did okay last year. Actually, we did. We did We did quite all right. But this year, we don't have the advantage of knowing who won the Super Bowl. No. So, so it's wide open. We'll start off with some sports. I think we all had Georgia sports. to win the college football championship, yeah, right? Yeah, sure there we, we are. That happened So yesterday. we'll move on to college basketball. The Baylor Bears, last season's winners, are the number one seed mm-hmm. currently. But uh, let's start with you, Dave. Who you you want to throw out there. I, I'm I'm going to go with Baylor again. I think that the you know well lightning in a bottle. Sure, Kevin, who you got? Well, I haven't been following it at all. I'm just going to take Michigan. <laughs> Why not? Easy, easy choice. I, I don't even know if they're ranked. <laughs> they're not <No>. currently. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Michigan State. Cinderella team. Yeah. I'll take Michigan State. Yeah, you should have stayed. So we know who's in the playoffs. What ah. a what a thrilling NFL season. I mean, came oh. right down to 12:07 on s- Monday morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Over that time. was crazy. Yep. Super Bowl, Kevin. I yeah, honestly, just because of the the fu factor, I'm taking Green Bay. Don't. I just I, <clears throat> I I I feel like you have to like he's. I don't like it. I don't like it. It make it, it makes my skin crawl. But it just seems like one of those things that will just happen. Like it's just that year, you know. <laughs> uh, see, I'm going to go even even wilder. I'm going to think Antonio Brown might show up again in an NFL uniform this year, desperately for someone. No, that's not going to happen. No, <laughs> does everybody know what Antonio Brown did? He quit. Oh yeah, he quit. Took off his jersey and quit in the middle of a game. Fantastic way to quit. That was basically a piece. I'm out. <laughs> but no, I don't think he's going to come back. So I, I'm actually I'm going in two directions for the Super Bowl. So I think the you know, and I'm a, call me a Stafford slappy, but I think that this is the year when he's really got something to prove, and he's still young enough. And that team that that they've surrounded him around. I'm, I'm going with the Rams. And if the Rams, for whatever, uh, I I have to agree with Kevin. Yeah, I know. It kills me. I know, because I, I'm in the same boat, it and, kills and me. Green Bay was going to be my pick. It kills um, me. I'm sorry. You know, there's some days where I, I kind of think Aaron Rodgers, is he's kind of fun and kind of funny, <laughs> and then he goes out and plays the Lions, and I think he's an absolute jerk. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They look good. They're strong, and and you know what? He's got a point to prove. He Yo, really does. Yeah. So hey, he he didn't need COVID uh, vaccination. He just made the rules for himself. Anyway, oh, moving on. I'll yeah. throw that throw this out there real quick because there's always that one team that gets in. Yep. that Nobody wants to play. You know, they thought it was going to be Indy, and then Indy. Well, they lost to Jacksonville. Oh. But is is there one team if you had to pick a dark horse? Can Tom Brady be a dark horse? No. No. No, they're the defending champs. We're talking like somebody like the Steelers or the Raiders or I don't I don't I, I don't like I, them. I really I, I think it's coming down to the favorites this time. I want to say Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. If Arizona picks up where they left off earlier in the season and Kyler Murray figures out how to play football again. Yeah, they can beat by the line. Yeah. If he figures like, out, but they were they were steamrolling the beginning of the season, so yeah, I'm gonna go cards. I I I don't think there's a team in the NFC that can knock off Green Bay or or the Rams. If Arizona beat the Rams, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the AFC, and I think if there's a dark horse, it's the Steelers. Yeah, yeah. I just Mike Tomlin has yeah. never had a losing nope. season. Fifteen years. He's got a quarterback who's on his way out the yeah, door. You know, off into the sunset, mm-hmm. and the you Peyton know what? Manning. Is, do you think Ben Roethlisberger is going to pull the Peyton Manning, win a Super Bowl in his retirement year? Right, because he went no. to Denver, 
I don't think he cares. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna ride off into the sunset without his helmet on. <laughs> like, doesn't it just seem like one of those guys that just doesn't care at all? Yeah, he just no. kind of shows up and he's yeah. like, "All right, well, I guess I'll come play football." So. Do I, I, do I got to put this shirt on again? All right, fine. Yeah, you know, it was in my jogging, right. jogging right. pants. We'll go through. What's your name? Uh, <laughs> we'll go through the next few. Well, kind of quicker. Dave, NHL, uh, hockey. Yes. Remember, that's my favorite sport. There we go. You yeah, what did I say? Har- the Hartford Whalers? Hartford Whalers. Yeah. Caroline is good. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say the New Jersey Devils. They're garbage, but anyway. Okay, yeah, my kind of garbage. I, I have to take the lead. Yeah, I, I figured. And I'll take the Panthers. Basketball, NBA. That's a thing still? Yep. Who's Kyrie Irving played? Brooklyn Nets? I don't know. Yeah. He, he's back. Okay. Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn. Kev? I like the Suns. I do too. Does Charles Barkley still play? No. Yeah, Charles is uh, lighting them up. Steve Nash? Major League Baseball. Blue Jays? You just put them in? Yes, but I'm, you know what? Call me again a hometown slappy. If the Tigers kind of have some. Let's just go Tigers, Blue Jays. Yeah. Come on. What? Yeah. <laughs> Tigers? <laughs> Out of here! It's because you're not here. I wanted to see how we both got our tigers hats on today. Like. <laughs> the tigers. No, the Jays. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, the Jays. Yeah. I, I I don't mind the Rangers. The moves. I know they were yeah. nothing last year, but the moves they made are yeah interesting for that team too. All right, we'll throw the Rangers on there too. Olympics. Who's going to top the gold medals? Winter oh, Olympics. say can you Winter Olympics. See? Come on. Yeah, I don't know. They got snow, Canada man. Canada did there. the last time, didn't they? Or was that 2010? 2010, 2010 we did. Uh, is, 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 can we call them Russia? Is it all the athletes that, that are, yeah, what are, are they, from Russia? Right, what are they going to be called this year? The Olympic Association? Because in the summer, what were they called? The, the Russian Olympic Association team, of I, folks? So, yes, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we can ignore it. <clears throat> Winter Olympics. We can skip it. Japan? Gonna, <laughs> no, it's going to be like be Germany state. or Norway yeah, exactly. or Canada yeah. or the U.S. Yeah. or Russia. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say I'll, Russia. Yeah, or the or the athletes from Russia. I'll go Norway. Sir, Norway. World Cup. Cross country. Qatar, December. World Cup. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they qualify, wow. I was just going to say Italy because then you're going to have all these people. Like myself, who yeah. drive around with their flags on their car from from <laughs> right? Like I, I have my when no, I have my England flag. Yeah. When I moved to Canada, yeah, they'd only qualified for one World Cup, and it was the year before I got here. I'd be pleased as punch yeah. to have a Canadian flag and an England flag oh. on my car. So wouldn't it be interesting if uh, if Canada qualifies and Italy doesn't? Mm-hmm. Well, we know or, it's either or gonna, Portugal doesn't. Well, yeah. one of them won't, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you know, like is Argentina? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go on Argentina. Me, probably Messi's last World Cup. Kev, Uzbekistan. I'll take England. I'll take England. Thank you. Yeah, I did too. You're welcome. All right, let's move away from sports. It's provincial election year. We know the uh, current sitting MPP is giving up the seat. We're not gonna. We don't know who's running, but mm-hmm. let's just say Party. we'll break it down. Is it going to be a minority or a majority? Who's going to be the party in power? And who's what party is going to win locally? Hmm. So let's start mm. majority or minority, Dave. I'm going to say minority. Kevin? Uh, I'm going to say majority. I'll, I'll side with Kev on that one. Uh, party in power? Kevin. Conservative. Oh, you think he's there's a repeat? Majority. You think okay. there's a repeat, eh? Yeah. Dave. I do. Uh yes, conservatives. I don't think there's enough to upset yet. Who knows? That might change. Well, I, I the way I look at it is the NDP isn't strong enough. The mm-hmm. Liberals really but I did think, nothing last election. But I so. think there's going to be a lot of split. That's why I think minority. Anyway, okay. go on. No, that's fair. That's fair. <clears throat> yeah. And knowing now the local seat is going to be up for grabs, mm-hmm. what party is going to win Essex? Conservatives. Kev? Yeah. 
I I think it's going to really depend on candidate. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's it's it's, it's, it's I think it's going to come down to the candidate. Yeah. So I would. I, I'm going to say conservative just because I, I, I think it's going to be a conservative majority. But I, I do, of all the ridings locally, I do think that the Essex always comes down to personalities yep. more than the other yep. ones on any side. Agreed. Um, so who knows? You know, I think it'll be the closest for sure. Yeah, not knowing who the candidates are, I'll mm. just I'll side with both of you on that one. Oh, make it easy. Th- thanks. <clears throat> so what we- happens in Chatham Kentley meets it? Oh. Because I know it's next door, but that is going to be a very interesting race. I think I think whoever the conservative candidate is gets in ahead of Rick. Yeah, well, he's Ontario Party now. Yeah, yeah. No. I don't. I don't know. No, I don't know. no, no. I yeah. I think the conservative candidate in Chatham Kent Leamington as well. Municipal election, we'll just play some numbers games. I want to know how many candidates you think there'll be for mayor, deputy mayor, and council. I'm just going to throw some numbers out there, and we'll. this is just more for fun and silliness. Two for mayor. Okay. Kevin? Uh, I'm going to say three. That's what I just wrote down for myself. All right. Deputy I think mayor? There'll be an, I think there'll be an outlier that, like... Oh, Dark Horse? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just one of those, like... Yeah. I don't want to say silly ones because it's never silly to run for. <laughs> no, but it's like one of those ones. Like, oh, yeah, yeah that's a surprise. Yeah, like like the old sausage guy from from Windsor, right? What was yeah, Ernie Lamont. Ernie Lamont. Good old, good old Ernie Lamont. The bacon man, the bacon not man. the sausage the guy. Man. The bacon man. <laughs> I just remember his bus rolling and around the city. He's not Lamont. He actually changed his name legally to Bacon Man. Oh, or the Bacon right. Man. Yeah, he yeah, did. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I want to see. The, he's Ernie the Bacon Man. I want to see that on a credit card. Candidates for deputy mayor, how many? Two. Yeah, two. I agree. Now, I remember a few years ago, well, was it two elections ago, we had, I don't want to say a silly number, but we had an impressive number of council candidates. It was close to 20 maybe? Mm, yes. Or, okay. Um, last time around, I don't think there were quite that 14? many. Um, I think so. Yeah. It's 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 a different election cycle uh-huh. based on everything we've seen over uh-huh. the last few years. It's it's just different. Uh-huh. Is this going to bring out more? Yep. Is this going to scare people away? Oh, I think everybody and their brothers got some very uh, overconfident <laughs> speculation that they can do the job better than anybody else. And I think we're going to get seventeen candidates. Kevin. So are we going? Are we going higher? Let's let's. How about we set a higher or lower number? All right. Okay. Let's oh, say right, the right. over under is fourteen. Over. I'm gonna say under. I think it'll, I think the the social media back firestorms will scare people away. Hope so. Oh, oh sorry, that came out fast. Oh, I sh- you know what I should have done is fourteen and a half. And a half, yeah. Okay. So you're under fourteen and a half, Kev. Yeah, yeah, I'm over. So it may be only thirteen or twelve, or fourteen. <laughs> well played. <laughs> I'm going over. I just, I think. Uh, can, can can we can we close off every episode with just you know a moment of truth from the team here at at that Kingsville podcast, gentlemen? Is this okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. No matter what anyone says, we are not running. For town council, no way. Oh, I was just gonna say, can we do an over under on the number of uh, podcast posts that are going to be running in the, <laughs> in the election? <laughs> I, I will hear, but I will state that I am not running for council. And if I turn around and run for council, there's reason not to vote for me because I've just made myself a liar <laughs> by running after saying I'm not. So, but you didn't say anything about deputy mayor. Oh. No, I mean for council, <laughs> like council position. Oh, I'm, I'm ruling them all out. Steve, I, no. Steve, gosh, God, love you. I, love I, you. I just threw out about 500 uh, campaign flyers today. <laughs> Kev, we could have distributed From, uh, those. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Run, run on your platform. Just update it with run white. Plat- <laughs> update it with white out. No, even, well, it's still no evening par- parades. Nah, no evening parades. <laughs> no evening parade. No paved paths. <laughs> Go to Applewood hot dog cart for your you know lunchtime <laughs> snack, whatever you want to do. Uh. Yeah, I I, uh, I can unequivocally claim that I will not be running in the next election. Uh, I will not be running. Municipal? Yes. 
Provincial? <laughs> None. None. Zero election. None elections. Prom king? <laughs> prom king. <laughs> Possibly prom king. <laughs> uh, we want to thank Gary Glass of Quantum Sound Productions for producing the podcast. If you need multicam live event commercial video or audio production, visit their website at quantumsoundproductions.ca for more info. Thank you, Kevin. We want to thank John Norton and Ryan McLeod from the town of Kingsville for joining on us, uh, joining us on this first episode of 2022. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Please like and subscribe. It helps us with some metrics so more and more people get to hear all this important information that we disclose on this wonderful little podcast in the town of Kingsville, Ontario. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time.